Trace Jackson Davis, you know, he um, sure for any of anybody that said that they didn't think that he was going to make it, and I was certainly in that group at, at at one point. At the end, you could see that he had really put himself in the position, but he has done exactly what he said he was going to do yesterday, signing a four-year contract with the Golden State Warriors with two years guaranteed. That's that's a first round draft pick contract, Dustin. Um, you don't get guarantees in the second round. Right. That does not happen. And he have a four year deal, two years guaranteed. Um, and and again, he could not have ended up in a better spot. And we knew that when it happened. Um, he was a little myth that the Pacers didn't take him but he's in a better position. Uh, and now, not only that, but he's got a guaranteed contract. I don't think that there's any other – is there any other second-round pick that has that? Uh, I mean, not to my knowledge. I haven't followed it probably quite as closely right. as I should have. But at the same time, I mean, you look at what Trace Jackson Davis did on the floor at Indiana. He kind of sent out that tweet after he, he slipped so far. I mean, there were people projecting him as a first-round pick. Uh, I didn't into that. that. And then – and that, well, but point being is that late first round, early second round was in, he was in that conversation to slip all the way down to where he did. And then for him to go out and send out a tweet that said, you guys are going to regret it, or I can't remember exactly the verbiage he used, but, and then to, to do what he's doing. Um, yeah. I mean, it stinks on the, on the half of, on the part of Indiana, you'd love to see him with the Pacers. It would have been awesome to see Grace Berger with the fever and, and Trace Jackson Davis with the Pacers. But, you know, I heard some conversations that sounded like, Trace Jackson Davis wanted an opportunity to play uh, a little, have a little bit bigger role with the franchise, and he wasn't probably going to get that with the Pacers, considering what they have on the roster, what they're looking to add. But he can and do that now in Golden State. The Pacers just yesterday it was announced, Dustin. They had they signed uh, Oscar Shibwe, and uh, I've, I've got to look back to see who it was the uh, the other guy, two guys, to two way contracts. Yeah, see that's the whole deal. They're on two way contracts, which means they're not going to spend much time. In the league, uh, right. they're going to spend the bulk of their time in the G League. Whereas Trace Jackson Davis, he's on the main roster; he's not going anywhere. And if he can get past his injuries, and whatnot, he's probably going to get some floor time. Oh, I would think so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Golden State's kind of in this period where they're trying to get back to the top of the NBA. They they limped into the playoffs last year. Obviously, you got a, a world champion coach and uh, Steve Kerr. You've got uh, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green's going to be around there, so he's going to learn from some of the best in the game. And I, I think Draymond just free signed, I believe, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be. I think it's a great fit for him. I think he's going to be able to have the opportunity to do big things. Now that doesn't mean he's going to be playing 25 minutes a game, but if you can get on the floor eight to 10 minutes and, and contribute, that'd be huge for him and for that franchise. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does. Uh, what I'm really intrigued by, Jim, is is you know what's I don't know if ironic would be the correct term here, but all throughout his college career, what we griped about with TJD was he he's not working on his jump shot. He's he, he's afraid to step out and hit a shot. Let me tell you, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson should be able to fix that. Steve Kerr should be able to fix that. So I think he's going to be a legitimate threat shooting the basketball, and I think that's probably why he will fit in so well with Golden State because if he develops – uh, he doesn't even have to shoot threes very frequently. If he can develop some sort of jump shot where he's a, a threat just about anywhere on the floor, watch out. He's going to have a – he may not be a, a perennial starter in the NBA, but he's going to have a role in that league for a long time. Well, and absolutely. And, again, it just – he did it, and he did exactly how he said it was going to do. I mean, for everybody, all of us, including me – I, I'm for hey, I'm I'm right there, baby. I I, I'm, I admit that said that there, you know you can't make it without a, a, a you know a jump shot. Well, guess what? Dude's got him a guaranteed contract. Yeah. So they have faith in him. That's that's the best thing for his mind and his confidence is he's with a team that has faith in him. A guaranteed contract to uh, the number 57 pick just doesn't happen, people. Right. Well, I think what's also interesting about it, too, is 
or why he probably landed that contract was they saw we saw it for four years was his insane athleticism on the basketball court and his ability to do just about anything and again gripe on that jump shot but I think he's going to get that figured out or if he if he hasn't already I mean I saw some videos during his during the NBA combine and um looked like he was I he think was he's going to gain nothing. I think he's just going to get more and more confident with but, I mean this this is the first thing that gives you confidence having somebody yeah. else that has confidence in you and right. the Warriors and Mike Dunleavy Jr. are showing that hey we got confidence in you we we want you I mean that's what they're saying we want you and there's nothing that's more beneficial to to someone mentally uh, than that than that because first of all it's very difficult to make the leap from college to the NBA. Don't mm -hmm. care who you are. You're playing with men uh, that have been doing this. Draymond Green's been doing this since 2013, man, or 12, yeah. I think it was. But and winning four championships along the way, so they know what it's what it takes and. He just couldn't have been a, ended up in a better place, and I, I think he's, and I'm sure he is now. But I, I, I think he should be ecstatic on how everything worked out. Oh, I think he is, and I think he will be. And again, you know, during his time at Indiana, I think the best way for them to win games was for him to to post up, to be dominant around the basket, to block shots, to get rebounds. And now he can he can expand his game a little bit. And again, I think Golden State saw what he can bring to the floor athletically what he's able to do on the defensive side. I think he can guard just about every position on the floor. I think he's that athletic. I think he's that mobile. It's just a matter of once you get that jump shot down, he's going to he's gonna be a really good basketball player and have a, have a, a long uh, career in the NBA. So it's going to be interesting. I, I'm going to watch a little bit more. Uh, you know, I don't frequently watch Golden State basketball until, until the playoffs start, but I'll, I'll be tuned in a little bit more frequently this year to see how he's doing. And um, I think he's going to be in a good spot. And I do think – like I said, it may not be 20 minutes a game, but I think he's going to be on the floor, you know, maybe in that eight to 10 minute range pretty regularly and, and do some some good things there for the Warriors out in California.